And uh, do you have any questions? Assalamualaikum. Uh, uh, could you please just tell us the um, five points of Mu'tazilite that you said it was very, very just... The five yeah. principles? Yes, the five principles. Thank you. Uh, by the way, these principles came developed over time, and uh, they, as they debated with various people, they held these principles that were the fundamental premises in their arguments. First one was Tawheed. Like they, they wanted to defend the oneness of God. Actually, the reason why they rejected attributes was to maintain Tawheed. Because they felt that if you say um, God has these multiple attributes, it's like introducing multiplicity to God's essence. But they thought it was a problem. Uh, but other scholars later, uh, like Imam Taftazani, for instance, said, when you say, um, uh, you know, you can't really say, when, when a person, a dark person comes into the room, you can't say blackness entered the room. You know, you have to give it to attribute that thing uh, that makes a person black to a person. So there's no problem in giving God attributes. That was the first one, Tawheed. Second one was justice, Adala, Adl. Um, and this one, uh, they said that God has to be just, absolutely just. Um, but they took it to a point where it limited God himself when they applied it in that way. I, I will explain that when we talk late, talk, later talk about the, the encounter between Jubai and Ash'ari, which is a kind of a defining moment in theology. Uh, the third one is Wa'ad and Wa'id, which means when God promises something, he must deliver on that promise. And what, when God uh, threatens you know, people, he must uh, deliver on that threat. Again, the scholars thought that this is confining God, that you, but the Quran says uh, God does whatever he wills, meaning you cannot really confine God's will to anything. Uh, and uh, the fourth one was al manzulat bayn al manzulatain that uh, if, a ma if a person sins, or major sinners, they are between belief and disbelief. Uh, basically, uh, the Kharijai said they become disbelievers, whereas the general Sunni position is that uh, the, the faith or the action does not uh, affect the faith in a sense that it doesn't take you out of religion if a person commits a major sin or if you don't practice religion. Like Abu Hanifa, for example, said that when a, uh, if a woman cannot pray five times a day in her menstrual cycle, does that mean she becomes a kafir for not praying? Because that's what it will lead to, that kind of uh, logic. Finally, Emri bil Maruh Nehru al Mulkar. There was uh, there was no problem with that one. When uh, Mutazilites were known to be activists, uh, that is, they they actively worked what they considered was good, they promoted, and what they considered was wrong, they tried to prevent it. Uh, actually, it led to the Inquisition as well when they were in power. Um, uh, that's the problem with politics, and unfortunately, when you really bring religion into politics. Uh, or when politicians act on, be, on behalf of religion. This is a very distinctive aspect of Islamic scholarship was that scholars stayed away from politics. But they did speak on issues because they represent, or when they felt that the uh, rulers were doing wrong things, they spoke out about it. Uh, that, that doesn't mean they become political. Uh, it's just that they did not run for office. And, and similarly, the rulers, whether they were caliphs or emirs or sultans, um, they did implement Islamic law, but they could not interpret Islamic law. This is a very important aspect of Islamic history. And unfortunately, in our time, people who uh, really strive for or talk about Islamic state, they don't have this kind of uh, idea in their mind. They have a different idea, which is a big problem. And it could really lead to the kind of inquisition that uh, Abbasids have implemented.